Joining us this morning to talk about this and much more is ExxonMobil's chairman and CEO, Darren Woods. Darren, welcome. Uh, good to see you this morning. Good to see you too, Becky. Let, let's talk through the numbers. Bottom line, better than the street had been expecting. What happened? Well, I would tell you, this is uh, this quarter reflects what we've been doing all year long, which is uh, excellence in execution. The organization is very focused on what we have to do to improve the business and have been executing the, the jobs required uh, to a very, very high standard. But I tell you, I, I look at this in the context of the year and more importantly, in the context of all the work we've been doing over the last several years. We anchored ourselves or benchmarked ourselves uh, in results in 2019, the year prior to the pandemic, to see the progress we've been making. And if you see the results in 2023 and compare that to 2019 and compare that to our peers, we're growing earnings and cash flow faster than peers. We are distributing more uh, returns to our shareholders. We have total shareholder returns are higher than our peers across that time frame. And if you if you take the market out of it, you take prices and margins out and just look at it on an apples to apples basis, we've more than doubled our earnings power uh, from 2019 to 2023. And that's a function of all the changes we've made in the, in the organization, the investments we've been making, the costs that we've taken out. So I think uh, this year marks another step in what has been a really good journey of improving this business and improving the company. You've also had record production levels if you look at a lot of different places. Uh, Guyana and Permian, a big part of the, the reason for those production levels seeing huge increases. Um, there have been a lot of questions about what happens with Guyana, with Venezuela making a lot of noise. Can you give us any update on the situation there and what you anticipate uh, the future holds? Well, the first point I would make is we're we're pretty far from the, the border and 100 miles offshore operating. So I think people need to put in perspective what we're doing in that country and um, the work that we do is, is well outside of the area that's, that's being discussed. But I would say there's been a lot of positive progress since this story uh, first broke and got a lot of attention. The, the presidents of both countries have met. They've agreed uh, not to advance their um, uh, arguments uh, through, through military or force. I think we've seen the Western uh, Western government step in and support uh, Guyana. And there's a process going on uh, through the court system to adjudicate on that dispute. And our belief is that will continue to happen and we'll let that process, uh, progress play out. In the meantime, we're very focused on you know doing what we've been contracted to do, which is to develop those resources efficiently and environmentally effectively. And I think the organization is doing a really good job on that. Darren, can we talk a little bit about um, some activist shareholders that have been trying to get some questions on the ballot to, to, to talk about climate change and what Exxon should be doing? You guys took the pretty unusual step of, of taking it to court last month. I, I know the activist investors just said forget about it. These investors said they, they'll take the ballot off. This is an issue that was very similar to one that they brought last year that was voted down, I think, by about 90 percent of the shareholders. But it does shine a spotlight on what has happened when it comes to trying to get questions brought to the shareholders. The SEC has made that process a lot easier. Um, and people are asking questions if the SEC is now a fair arbiter. Why did you take that issue to court? What happens next? Well, I think you, you made the point, the right point there, Becky, which is these aren't true investors. These are uh, activists masquerading as investors and, frankly, uh, using other people's shares to bring proposals to the company that aren't in the best interest of the company, aren't in the best interest of our legitimate investors. And so uh, we have been trying to highlight this as an issue and uh, the SEC has reinterpreted its rules. And as you've indicated here, uh, made it much, much easier for these activists um, to bring proposals to, the, to uh, our proxy that frankly, uh, diminish the, the ability for us to effectively run our businesses. And we have been working towards uh, uh, addressing that. Last year, we got very explicit and, and pointed in many of our responses to the uh, proposals to point out uh, the, the objectives of the proponents. And this year, we took the additional step, recognizing this was the third year in a row uh, of this same proposal. Last year, that proposal was was put in the proxy and, and got less than 11 percent support. This was the third attempt to bring it in. We just felt like we had to take a stand on this and really uh, make very explicit what's going on here and make sure that uh, our shareholders understand uh, the issue. What uh, what's the problem with just allowing people to vote on it again and, and 
what does it do? Why why did you get frustrated to the point where you want the courts to 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 sort this out? You know, the, many of the issues that are brought forward in these proposals are extremely complicated, and the way the proponents put these on the ballot don't, you know, don't begin to convey the complexity or, in fact, what the impact uh, on the company is. And so, there's a there's a huge cost, one, in responding to these uh, proposals, but secondly, there's not a, they do not represent the issues at hand. Or the implications for the company, and frankly, uh, lead to um, potentially serious unintended consequences. And so, we're trying to focus and make sure we're a big believer in shareholders having a voice and making sure that they have an opportunity to express concerns or to ask questions, and to make sure that that we, as management, are stewarding uh, this company and and their shares and their their value, their interest in our company effectively. Uh, so we're, we're very supportive of that process, but it's like a lot of systems um, today. Uh, you've got a, a system that is good, that's been abused, and that abuse then basically diminishes the value for everybody. We're trying to get back to focusing this on in legitimate investors who have legitimate issues or concerns that they want the broader shareholder base to speak on. Uh, we're very supportive of that. Yeah. We'll continue to work that way to get rid of the flack.